Hey friends, I just woke up from sleeping for a solid seven hours. I feel very well rested, but I still feel kind of groggy, you know, from sleeping for so long. Same thing happened when I went to USA. Let's talk about travel. What did it take me to get to USA and back? All right. First thing was I got all my stuff together and I was ready to leave the house. Now, this was my carry-on bag and it's kind of cool because it has this stringy thing here right where you open the zipper where you can attach your keys. So I put my keys on here and put them in the bag. But then when I come home I can just easily open the zipper a little bit and pull my keys out you know dig them out from wherever they are and this thing also has magnets that snap into place when you close it okay so that was the first thing leaving the house I thought I'm really doing this you know, I'm really going to another country. I'm really going to USA. I caught the last bus to the train station area. Now, normally riding a motorcycle takes about 11 minutes to get to the train station. <coughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> but taking the bus takes about 50 minutes because there's, you know, the bus goes around to pick up other passengers. Okay, fine. That makes sense. In Taiwan, a lot of big cities have intercity bus companies located near train stations, and it kind of makes sense. So I went to the one that I always know, but when I got to Hoshin, they said, we don't have any seats. Okay. I went to Tonglian. Oh, we have a seat for you at 6 a.m. Yeah, well, I have to be at the airport at 7. She told me it would take six hours to get there. I talked to a taxi driver and the taxi driver said, I'm willing to take you, man, but on the meter, that's going to be like four or $5,000. And then who's going to hire me to come all the way back to Tainan? I'm glad he was honest. I was just about to give up and then I found Guo Guang Ke Yun. Now Guo Guang is a company that stemmed from martial law decades ago. During martial law the the what is now Guo Guang Ke Yun was the monopoly of of busing in in inner city busing in Taiwan. And so I went to Guo Guang and they're like, yeah, yeah, we can take you there. We have, we have seats. Um, you'll need to buy two tickets though. One goes to Tsama and the other one goes directly to the airport. And I was like, cool, okay. How much is that? No, oh, 400 and something dollars. That is way less expensive than the others. And 
I got to Chao Ma. Now, now Chao Ma is in Taizong. Taizong is in the middle of Taiwan. And Chao Ma, I think, is kind of a nickname. You can't find it on the map. It's just kind of a nickname that everybody agrees on, that this is the area where there are a lot of bus transfer stations and so on. So I got to Chao Ma and got my bag out of the bus and took my bag to the bathroom to pee, which was a little bit weird, but when I came out, the guy, the, the coach looking guy with a whistle around his neck, he said, yeah, bus is here, you can, you can get on now. So I got on the bus, got directly to the airport, and it was like 4 a.m. That's a long wait until 7 to check in. That is the best bus service I've ever had. It's Guoguang from now. I will never take the others. Guoguang is good. So I got there and the main hall where there are a lot of check-in counters for different airlines, there are no seats. I saw people sitting on the floor, but I found a seat. It was a network conduit box. This box probably had a lot of routers in it or something. But that was my seat for three hours, waiting to <clears throat> finally get in to check in. Finally, I got on the plane, and it was a Boeing 777, 777. Okay, so there are three seats, an aisleway, four seats, an aisleway, and then three seats. And I had the window seat. Next to me was a girl who was I uh, seven to nine years old. I I don't know. And then next to her was the mother, and then the aisleway. Okay, fine. She didn't really talk to me much, but when her mother was away, she was kind of conversational. She asked me where I was from and this stuff and she was pretty nice but when the mother came back then she wouldn't talk to me anymore I don't know I'm not a pedophile or anything you know, you know she was just being careful maybe I watched her movies I didn't get the ear set she had the the earphones on watching movies but she did turn on the Chinese subtitles. So I was watching her movies and she chose the children's section and I watched a lot of Disney stuff so that was kind of fun because the game that I play is called Disney Heroes Battle Mode. And then if I didn't like, if she paused it or something, I could watch the, the next person over in the row in front of me, I, I could watch their movies too. That was kind of fun. After an eternity, I finally landed in San Francisco. Now, my mom is going to leave a nasty comment for what I'm about to say, but the first thing I need to do in San Francisco is find the smoking section. Okay. From the domestic terminal, you kind of go around and then there's the outdoors. There's door one to door 13. Go outside door 13 and there's the designated smoking, the designated smoking area. Inside is, is where you go into security and then you can go to the international terminal. So it's kind of a nice place. The first time I went there, I met a nice guy from Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. 
very nice guy. I went in and messed around and when I came back out, I met a woman from San Francisco. I'm in San Francisco and I met a woman from San Francisco. She had wanted to take a very early flight and there was no pilot. So everybody had to get off the plane and wait for the next one. So that she was waiting for that. I went through security. I went back in and then suddenly there was a big long line for security. So I waited a long time. I, I wasn't late. I, I did make it on time to go to Denver. Now the flight to Denver, I, I had a window seat, three seats, aisle, three seats, and I was the one at the window. The guy who sat next to me was from Denver. Okay, so we talked a little bit, not the whole flight, but he was really nice, and that was a good time. But there was a child on the plane. Now, normally children will cry, 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 and then go to sleep, right? Not this one. This one went, ah! every 22 seconds. I could not sleep on that flight. Then I finally got to, to Denver, and Denver's smoking situation is odd. You have terminal A, B, and C, and then the main terminal. So the only place you could smoke, I was in terminal B, is to take an underground train to the main terminal and then go out the northeast corner of the building, perhaps. And there's a designated smoking area. Then you have to find the train and take the train back to your terminal. And so I did, and I wasn't late, and I still had to wait. And then, Denver to Columbus. The guy who sat next to me was from Columbus, and he's kind of a, a serious outdoors dude. He went you know, mountain biking in Utah and told me a lot of stories. And so that was pretty interesting. We also didn't really talk the whole flight, but he was, he was, you know, busy with his phone and stuff. But I had a window seat and that was okay. I was seat A next to the window on the left side. Do you remember the 22 second screaming kid? That kid was on the flight to Columbus also. And also seated two rows behind me. I have never wanted a chainsaw so much in my whole life. God. So I got to Columbus already in the country, domestic, domestic flight. And I f went through the concourse and thinking, gotta get to baggage claim. And then I see my mom and sister. Can you imagine how I felt? My mom and sister in real life. Oh, wow. And so then we went to baggage claim and I got my bag and my sister said something that I didn't really say anything about at the time. In the car, we had to drive two loops around the parking structure to figure out how to get out of there. And I suddenly started laughing. And they're like, you know, what's so funny? I said, 
my sister Cindy said, let's take a baggage claim selfie. <laughs> it doesn't sound funny, but she said it kind of like it's a thing, you know. Let's take a baggage claim selfie. And so, <laughs> the entire car ride home was just fun and jokes and, and just, you know, being together again was great. And then, on the way home, there was, off to the horizon of red lights, of tail lights, of mostly trucks, because the freeway had flooded. I actually came down through a thunderstorm to land in Columbus. And that's the first time I ever landed at Port Columbus west to east. So yeah, there's the campus area. Okay, fine. And we're getting lower and there's 670 and then we're landing. We actually landed west to east, which was which is unusual. I mean, the the air mass moves west to east, so they usually curve around and land east to west. <clears throat> but they did the other way around. Okay, fine. Going home was a little bit different. Going home, we got up at dark 30, and I really, really appreciated that my Uncle Fred decided to come in the car too to see me off. But I told them, please don't park and go in with me. Just drop me off and you can go home and sleep. And they did. But Uncle Fred still wanted to come with me. And I really, really appreciated that. I got to Columbus and I went to the United Airlines desk and he gave me all three boarding passes to go to Taipei. But I got all middle seats. What is up with summertime, man? Everybody's traveling. How can the buses be full in the middle of the night on Tuesday? You know, uh. Anyway, I got on my flight to, to Denver and then waited for 80 minutes because of equipment malfunction. Now, isn't that settling? Ugh. When the plane took off, it sounded like something was out of balance. You know, like, what the hell? Did a tennis ball get in there or something? Oh. We made it to Denver. At Denver, I, I expected to run to my boarding gate because the plane at Columbus was delayed by 80 minutes because of equipment malfunction. God. And so I was late getting to Denver and I ran to the very first United desk I could find and she said, oh, take your time. That plane's delayed by an hour. Found my way to my gate and the plane was delayed because of air traffic control. San Francisco had rained a lot and so they asked for an hour, a one hour delay for flights to arrive. So I got to San Francisco, everything was cool. 
I went to the smoking section, met someone nice, and then, oh, you better get to your boarding gate quickly because they're already boarding. So I went through security again, getting pretty good at, at this point. I got through security and went to my boarding gate in the International Terminal. <clears throat> and that plane was delayed for an hour. Whew. Again. So I got on my flight to to Taipei. Again, Boeing 777, three seats, aisle way, four seats, aisle way, three seats. In the four seats, I was the third one. Next to me was a two-year-old girl and next to her was the mother and then the aisle. <coughs> what do you think I was thinking? Oh God, a two-year-old next to me. I didn't even know she was two years old yet. That mother took care of took care of this child so well that she never made any noise the whole flight sometimes the mother would sit forward in her seat to allow the baby or the the child to lie down flat Sometimes she would kick my, my leg. And I told the mother, if this kid kicks my leg, it's okay. She was so good that, you know, it even felt good, you know. I was freezing to death in this place. I was freezing to death in the plane. You know, her warm feet touching my leg once in a while. Okay, all right, that's nice. No problem there. After dinner, one of the one of the two dinners, she let the girl stand up and, and jump on the seats and scream and, and have fun. And, okay, good. You know, get it out of her system. And then she went back to sleep and never bothered me in any negative way the entire flight of 12 hours. Just before we landed, I told that mother, this is a very nice girl. She's very good. And you handle her very well. You are a great mother. I really told her that. And she said, thank you. Of all the kids that I've hated on public transportation, this two-year-old girl made a difference to me. She could smack me over the head. And I wouldn't even care. She was so good the whole flight. And the mother was good too. All right, so when landing in, in, in Taipei, if you don't have a Taiwan passport, you have to fill out a, a immigration card or uh, customs or something. And everyone from window to window had to fill out one. These are Taiwanese people who have dual citizenship or, or somehow 
entering Taiwan using a U.S. passport. I was the only one that didn't need one. So when they're passing these things out, I was like, I, I don't need one. And so I went through the Taiwan passport only line in immigration. Nobody better than I this time. And then I went to baggage claim where I waited so long I ended up sitting on the floor. I actually sat Indian style on the floor waiting for my bag. Oh, that took forever. And then customs, nothing to declare. Let's go through this line. Smile and go outside and I'm in Taiwan again. It kind of smelled like a fish tank in there. But I think that's probably the way most of Taiwan smells because it's so humid even with the air conditioner running all the time. So I went outside and I found the Guo Guang Ke Yun to get back to Tainan. And I bought tickets to Tao Ma and then back to Tainan. And while I was waiting I met a guy who was pretty nice. And then on the bus, sitting next to me was a girl that saw my ticket and knew I wanted to go to Tainan. But she wanted to go to Tainan as well. She was coming back from Korea, where she had visited. She thought I was like, you know, some first time visitor to Taiwan. I was like, how, what? You just graduated from high school? I've lived in Taiwan longer than you. Longer than you have. So she turned out to be really nice and plans to invite me to various events. And so, I got back to Tainan to Binghongchang, which is also not on the map. Just like Tama in, in Taizong, I got back to Binghongchang. And then I hadn't, I hadn't even stepped a foot off onto the ground and there's taxi drivers saying, do you, wanna, do you need a car? I said, wait a minute got my bag out of the bus and then I negotiated with the guy and said yeah okay I want a taxi home I got home and you can't imagine what it's like to spend only a week away from home so far away and then come home and you're there oh man Tim came out and said hey man I said hey you know I said hi to Tim and said hi to the kiddies went out on the go row you know just to get a feel for, for it again you know Oh, I loved my trip. I loved everything that I experienced. And I loved getting home again. So, that was my experience for the, the transportation part. Next video is first day in USA. So, before I do that, take care, have fun, and be safe out there, friends.